Yo, what is going on guys? Jack here, and welcome to episode 35 of my tracksuit to the top series here with Lewis FC for the first time ever in the Sky Bet League 1. Hopefully you guys are good. Uh, if you missed last episode, go check it out. It was a big end of season recap. Gave you some thoughts on what I hope to achieve this year, kind of places I wanted to improve, potential signings. Took a look back at the squad of old and kind of reflected a little bit on this career so far. But today starts a brand new chapter as we are going to be playing in the Sky Bet League 1 for the first time ever. Um, obviously Lewis have never made it into the Football League so to make it to the Football League 1 in straight seasons since we've joined is absolutely incredible. We've made some fantastic signings again this year. Um, very much following the trend that's kind of kind of been set I guess by this save in terms of spending smart money and bringing in players smartly. I guess the first thing to do is look at the transfers as it is every year. It's the bit that you guys perhaps look forward to the most, the big shake-up. And today there was a big shake-up and there was two huge sales. We're going to start with them first. So last episode I talked a little bit about the Ivory Coast guys who didn't have work permits but that had Premier League potential and I wasn't going to be able to renew the contracts of. And I offered them both out for £1 million. And Pierre Cisse was the big one, because I offered him out for a million pounds and suddenly 36 clubs from around Europe, no English teams, were interested in him. They all wanted him, they all bid one million pounds. So I offered him out for 2.5 million pounds. And again, a good amount of teams came in, I think it was about 16 that time. So I decided to take the Michael a little bit and offer him out for 5 million pounds and Dynamo Kiev were the only team to match that valuation and they bought him. So thank you, Dynamo Kiev. You've paid £5 million for a player I got in on a free at the start of last year. Um, he's a good player, don't get me wrong, Pierre Cissé, but I couldn't get him a work permit. His contract expired in two years' time. Unlikely he ever would have got one. And Despite his potential, £5 million for him, superb. Uh, Yobu, similar story with him, offered him out for £1 million. Eventually, you know, started bumping the money up a little bit, and eventually I negotiated a £3.8 million deal with Sparta Prague. If we look at the transfer clauses here, you can see that in the case of Cissé, uh, we owed a little bit of money over each month, although the majority of the £5 billion was paid up front, whereas with Yobu, we're, o o uh, we're owed £3 million pounds up for the next six months, working out, obviously, at five hundred grand a month, which is ridiculous. That money may means that we're really well off now i haven't had to sell anyone else any of my actual key players because that was a worry for me that i might have to let samuel go if a big offer came in and it's left us in a very healthy situation both those players have real potential but unfortunately they just weren't going to reach at us because they couldn't get work permits and it's one of the disadvantages i guess of managing in england so anyway monetarily and i guess financially that's the right word i was looking for we're in a fantastic place right now, which is really pleasing, and it's allowed me to spend some nice money elsewhere. Um, so I guess we'll talk about some of the transfers on the ins now. In fact, no, we're not, because um, there's something else that I just remembered. So obviously, I sold on these two Ivory Coast players for £8 million, so I decided to go, are there other players like this around? So I went back to Ivory Coast... Uh, under 21 squad and found this guy who could be joining us on a free even if he fails his work permit we're going to sign him uh, Eric Sanogo an incredible Ivory Coast player um, it's just the it's the invasion of the Ivory Coast players now because uh, this guy's played two appearances for the first team and he's only 19 and he looks incredible from what I can see and I'm actually kind of hopeful secretly inside that he might get a work permit so we can keep hold of him I can't scout him unfortunately because I don't know the Ivory Coast particularly well uh, and then there are a few other players um, they follow similar trends not all of them are from the Ivory Coast um, but you know, there's a few players here, you know, Moroccan here, 19 years old, he's only on £40 a week. Uh, there's a few players in here who I'm looking to sign. The only one coming in for real money would be Sonogo, 300 k but that looks like an absolute bargain if we get him in for that price, considering the sales we made. But let's talk about the players who actually left and joined the club. Now, let's not talk about the players who will be coming and going, because it'll make more sense to show them next episode once you guys can see how good they actually are. But on the outs, a few to mention. Henry Muggeridge has unfortunately left the club, been at the club for four years um, since I first took over, but unfortunately... He's just not grown into a good enough player to warrant a spot in our team. Zach Anser, another player who joined a few years ago. A little bit sad to see a few of these players go because they've been great players for us. But 
they just they're just not what we need right now, and that they're, they're just not good enough. Chabola's gone. I mentioned last episode he'd probably be going. There's a few other players here. There's a few too many to kind of go over individually. Um, a few other players haven't gone, but have been demoted to my under twenty ones. There's probably a few players you might recognise here and there. Um, and in my first team. But anyway, let's focus on the positives, the uplifting stuff, the transfers in, the, the interesting ones perhaps. And there are a few very interesting ones, including two players who I really wanted to get in, who I mentioned last episode. So we'll cover them first. Jerome Sinclair joins us. Incredible signing. Uh, leading player for most championship sides. Obviously, we're a League One side. Uh, he's come in on three grand a week, which is obviously a big increase for his pay. He's happy to join the club. He looks very happy to be here. And he's a player who I'm hoping is going to come big for us. Last year had a really good year in the championship. I say really good. His average rating doesn't reflect that. But 11 goals in 34 isn't terrible. And he's, considering he's coming down a division to play for us, I'm hoping for a lot from him. Shea Ojo also joined us from Liverpool. This guy is actually converted to Nigeria in terms of uh, national team-wise. He's playing for their under-21 side, or under-20s rather. He is still English, so he didn't need a work permit. And that's now become his secondary nationality because of how our nationalities work in FM. But he joined us on a free. Last year he played for York, who got relegated and finished rock bottom. Didn't have the best season, but he's a fantastic player. And he's going to be an incredible roaming playmaker for us. The only real downside to him is his natural fitness. Uh, as a result, I brought in another player here, Wilfred Gnor, um, who's an Ivory Coast player, incidentally, but also English. He didn't need the work permit. Um... And you can see here, he's a, a really good backup roaming playmaker, the kind of player we can have on the bench ready to come on and be kind of the, the, the rotation option. Also worth noting, Notts Forest obviously in purple, that means they're one of our affiliate clubs. They finished 7th seventh, seventh last year in the Premier League. They have rich finances. And uh, obviously now we are their feeder club. Well, not their fe feeder club because we don't have a, to give them players, but... They're our parent club, so we can get some players off them, and Gnor was the big player who stood out who we got in. We also made a few signings from Newcastle. One was permanent, and that was Rolando Ahrens, who we signed from um, Newcastle. You can see here another player who uh, has English nationality, but also dual nationality, so he's actually played internationally for Jamaica. 23 caps, he's 22, has some incredible pace for this division, a really good player, plays on the left wing as well, which is nice. Obviously, I talked about last episode how I was going to stop playing probably the 4-3-3 and go back to a 4-4-2. With the signings we've made, I've been able to do that. But one of the issues I had was out on the left wing, my players were all right-footed because I was playing them as inside forwards and having them cut inside. As a result, I needed someone with a good left peg, and this guy fits the bill. He's on a very, very large wage, but he's a fantastic player, and as you can see, if we look at the scout report, um, he would be a good player for championship side. So very pleased to get him in. Um, Adam Armstrong was the other player from Newcastle, a really good striker, a player who's been in FM for a while as a bit of a wonder kid. You can see him here. He's played for England's under-21s. He's going to come in and he's a really good striker, obviously. Normally, you'd expect him just to go straight into our first team. But I think he's going to be a very good rotation option, particularly with Sinclair and Samuel up front. To have Adam Armstrong on the bench is fantastic because we essentially have three championship-quality strikers. The only other player was Joe uh, Judgkin. I hope I've said that right. Judgkin. I can't say his name. We'll call him Joe. Joe here, uh, he's a Northern Irish international with nine caps. You can see looking at it, he played for Crystal Palace last year, he joined them on a free, uh, and he looks like a very good left back. He's joining us on a loan for the year, uh, we're only paying £900 of his wages, and he's a very good fullback, one area of the pitch I really wanted to improve. So anyway, looking at our squad for this year, a bit of a rundown, I guess, of who's playing where. This is what I consider to be our best eleven. We have no injuries to speak of, which is absolutely glorious to start off the season. Uh, we start with Craig Mullen in goal, who improved a lot over the pre-season. Aerial ability and command of area both gone up to 10. Now, if I'm not mistaken, uh, his aerial ability at maybe at the start of the league season in the Vanarama Conference was around 6 so to get that up by four in about two years is really impressive, and he's still improving. Uh, and he'd be a decent player for most League One sides. So he's a very good goalkeeper, and he's actually considered one of the worst players in the team. 
At right back we have Niall Keown who joined us last year. Didn't have the best year last year but we'll see how he gets on this year. Full back's always been a bit of a problem position for us. Uh, at centre back we stick with our two players from last year. Pierce Sweeney who last year was a League One standard player. He's still a League One standard player. Uh, obviously great season last year. 7.16 average rating. And alongside him we have Borthwick Jackson who um, as you can see he's still in the club. He's still loving life. Uh, and he's still a very good player for us and to keep both our centre-backs who were both League One quality centre-backs last year is very pleasing he also, so as you can see he'd be a leading centre-back for teams in this division so that's really good at left back we've got Dudgeon or Joe uh, <laughs> who I already talked about in midfield a few new faces obviously Rolando Aarons or Aarons uh, out on the left wing I think it's Aarons we'll go with it uh, centre-mid we go with Lewis Thompson who was here last year obviously had a great first year at the club He's now going to play no longer in a deep defensive midfield position, but more as a centre mid. He's still going to be playing a more defensive role as a ball winning midfielder and kind of holding the fort. Uh, at centre mid, we obviously have Sheyi Ojo, who I already talked about the fact we're going to be playing him at roaming playmaker. Uh, a few years ago, obviously, when we played this 4 4 2 system, this role in the centre mid was a deep line midfielder, but I feel as if with a bit more quality there now, we can rely on Ojo to really push up and, I guess, throw his weight about and you know kind of be a bit of a more of a force in the center mid position if it kind of perhaps ruins the balance of the tactic we can always switch that back to a deep lying midfielder our right mid we stick with Cameron Stewart who of course was great last year uh, right footed out on the right hand side just a very good midfielder good pace that's something we're going to have an abundance of out wide with errands with what pace has he got? 18 acceleration and 17 pace. And then on the other side, obviously, we have Stewart, who, as I mentioned, um, he has uh, 16 acceleration and 15 pace. So we've got lots of speed out wide, and that could be very useful for us this year. And then the final third, obviously, Alex Samuel, who was here last year, the big player, kind of the standout performer, I guess, last year. And he has a new strike partner this year, and it's his first time playing with two players up front. And uh, that's Jerome Sinclair. Both these players are actually very, very similar players. Looking at a comparison here, you can see Jerome Sinclair has a little bit more about him in kind of everywhere, I guess, with the exception of perhaps a little bit in technical. Uh, but Samuel's mentals are still very impressive. And together, the two similar players, but I think they're going to work very well together. Neither of them is incredible in the air, and that does worry me slightly, but... Um, I guess we're going to have to deal with that. And the reason that worries me is because of the fact we are using, you know, the wider players. We might be putting in a few crosses. So we'll just have to see how they get on there. In fact, one option I could do would be to hit uh, low crosses, which is probably actually a good shout because we're not going to have that presence in the air. And obviously Adam Armstrong, who's our kind of third choice striker. Again, he's a very similar mould, three very similar strikers. We've got three very good strikers, and I'm hoping between them all they're going to get us plenty of goals. On the bench, there's no one really new here who you guys aren't familiar with. Muleba keeps his position just because he's very very versatile, being able to play anywhere at the back. Isaac Hayden sticks in the side still, a player who's been at the club a good few years now. Good coverage, can play centre mid, defensive mid, centre back. Liam Walsh had a great year last year, so he keeps a spot in the squad. Uh, Gnor, as I already mentioned, or uh, yeah, I guess it's uh, Gnor. Um, he is obviously the backup to Ojo. I already talked a little bit about that. Kenji, very good player last year. Very useful because he can play left mid and right mid. Probably going to be more likely to play him at right mid, but you can see a very good wide midfielder. Um, and then Brandon Barker, who was a good player last year, wanted to leave. I've not left let him go yet just because I think he's useful I might have to try and sell him but I want to try and secure maybe a few more transfers yet because if I just show you um, there's still a lot of money thanks to the sales of our other players to really invest it and perhaps bring in some really good players but you know we've kind of got to wait on that and just uh, see what bids and players might materialise and who my scouts might find for us but anyway that's our squad for this season today's first game is actually against Crew, who where did they finish last year? Let's, have, let's just have a look. If we check the league table um, for last year, Crew finished at fifteenth. So um, pretty much want to beat these. They're not gonna not gonna lie. We should be beating them. Um, look at the league table last year. It was a very close division. Like forty five points to finish bottom for York isn't actually that terrible, although it doesn't look great. Um, because we have a few championship quality players, I hope that we can bounce back. If I just show you the, the league, there are some big teams here. You've got players like Bolton, Blackpool, Watford, who failed to get out of this division last year. Derby are down here. 
Um, you know, there's a few bigger championship teams who have been relegated, and obviously this year it's no longer the three automatic promotion spots like it is in League Two. We're down to two. So we're going to have to perform well, but we've got two very good goal scorers who are championship quality players, and I'm hoping that goals and goals alone are going to be enough to carry us through. I've put quite a lot of faith in our back four from last year, which wasn't fantastic, but the real quality we've added in the final third, I'm hoping is going to shine through this year, and particularly going to a four in the midfield as a flat line as opposed to playing kind of three centre mids. I'm hoping that's going to cover our defences a little bit better out wide because our full backs were exposed last year, but unfortunately, because I didn't have a second or third choice striker who were really adequate I guess and I felt confident playing we just stuck with the one up front so we now have that option of course we could go back to last year's system and you know we'll, we'll see how things go we've got a very versatile squad here some very good players capable of playing a lot of positions and that's going to serve us very well so anyway let's get into today's game as I mentioned we are going to be playing crew Lee Mason the referee today our preseason was pretty good um, the only defeats coming against Fulham and Billericay to be honest these don't play that big of a role in you forming your opinion or at least they shouldn't do because they're not that significant the win against Burnley was pleasing though to say the least so anyway, as I mentioned, we've already got our squad sorted. We've got to give a number to Gnor. Um, I can't say that guy's name. Gnor? Gnor? We'll go with it. Uh, as you can see, we've been in charge for four years. Steve Davis in charge of crew. You're going down, son. You are going down. Anyway, looking at their system, they're playing a 4-4-2-2. Um, so this could be an interesting battle, obviously. Two shapes, fairly well-matched sides I guess they're a mid-table team so as I mentioned I feel like we should be beating them I didn't check our season preview prediction I almost want to check that just really quick because I do feel like that is important just to check where we're expected to finish um so as you can see we actually predicted to finish ninth crew have predicted to finish 12th ninth ninth is a very generous <laughs> prediction may I add uh, looking at the key players they think it's Sinclair and Samuel both our strikers which I'd kind of be inclined to agree with but anyway Let's get into today's game. So the media seem to quite like our squad if they're predicting a top half finish with our squad for our first year in this division. I do feel like we have a very good team. There are a few players in this squad certainly who are championship quality, and the, for the most part, the majority of the squad is championship, uh, sorry, League One quality, and that includes our subs. But anyway, we'll see how we get on here. We have a chance early on. That's a clear cut chance missed apparently by Sweeney. The centre back, Judge Gunn with a very long throw. You guys saw a little bit of it there. That's another reason why I think he's a very good player to get in on loan. He's going to offer us something that we've not really had before in his long throws. As I mentioned, though, we don't have the best players in the air, but it might be something we can look to capitalise on. Um, be interesting to see how that works out this year because, to be honest, generally in my saves, I don't look at long throws as a particularly useful attribute. I just don't put much weight and worth into it, but it was just a nice added bonus. I guess we have. Uh, Dudgeon, um, which I wanted to utilise. But anyway, looking at the stats here, we're actually really in control, but unfortunately, the game is still nil-nil, and crew are on the attack here. Can we prove our defensive capabilities? Good to see both midfielders working well at the back. Um, obviously, the Roman playmaker role I really like, because it's like a deep-line playmaker, but I kind of feel like it suits players who are maybe slightly more athletic and have higher work rate, because it allows them not only to drop behind and help defend, but also when you're going forward, they will make those late runs into the box and lurk around the edge of the area, whereas the deep-line playmaker can sometimes just sit a bit too deep and there's no one really to mop up any loose balls from crosses in which is obviously a large element of this system. Looking at it, Crew just had another clear-cut chance then. Mullen with a nice save that time. Um, it's been a fairly 50-50 game. Perhaps they're edging it, but, um, you know, obviously no, no deadlock broken yet, and we're not playing badly. It'd be nice to see maybe one or two of our new signings have a big impact in their first games and do well, but at the moment it's just a bit of a bore draw. Now, I believe last time we played crew, we got knocked out in the cup, and that's why I can tell the players to avenge it. But either way, they are absolutely in loving the idea of avenging the previous defeat, so we're just going to let them enjoy it. Um, and yeah, we'll see how we get on. Looking at their fullbacks, they're not really adventuring too far up, so they are playing pretty defensive, I'd guess, or at least their fullbacks are set to defend. So we might be able to double up on them potentially if we set our fullbacks to more attacking. I can always change the roles. But anyway, we're on the attack here. Jerome Sinclair turns his man. Stewart's there. Cameron Stewart with a chance. That's a clear cut chance blocked away by the crew defender. A real chance to get on the score sheet there, and it hasn't happened. Can we make anything of this corner though? Ball's in. Cleared away. Thompson is tackled, and that's probably going to mark the end of that attack. Oh no. Judgkin. 
I can't say his name. Joe with the long throw. Okay, he doesn't even beat the first man. I've signed you for your long throws. I haven't, but they looked good. Oh, the ball's in the box. Stewart hits the post. There's a rebound. Aarons shoots. He scores. He scores. Rolando Aarons on his debut. The Jamaican international. It took three clear cut chances in one highlight for us to score, but eventually the ball found its way in the back of the net. If that hadn't gone in, I might have actually cried because I think there were three clear-cut chances in that one highlight from the long throw that just wasn't cleared. Just a, a mad scramble in the box, but it falls to Rolando and he just powers it in at the second time of asking on his right, left foot on that stronger foot of his. And we break the deadlock and since half-time, we have been looking very good. Looking at the stats, they've certainly swung in our favour. Now, can we make that continue? No, we can't. We're going to give it straight to Fuller. And Andy Fuller is going to score because Keown at right back, and I said at the start of the game that right back was a problem position, has decided he doesn't like passing it to keeper's feet. He's got to play the free ball back to the keeper, and he's a wazzock, and they've capitalised on it, which is silly. Hopefully that doesn't cost us points. As he makes another mistake, and now speeds through, and he smashes it over. You know what? You know what? Keown, get off the pitch. You've been fucking awful. Ojo's fitness is struggling. He, he didn't get as much match fitness as I'd like, so Gnor's going to come in. Obviously, that low natural fitness certainly doesn't help there, combined with a lack of match fitness in general, because he was... A, I don't want to say he was a late signing, but he was a signing who wasn't done as early as I would have liked uh, in the pre-season. But anyway, we'll make those changes. We've sorted out our right-back issue by bringing on... Oh, Jerome, 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 Jerome. That was a chance. I don't know how he's missed that. I, I really don't know how he's missed that. It was easy. The goal was wide open and he's just he's, he's smashed it over. Hopefully he can book up his finishing. Right now though, we have got another chance. Let's keep our faith in the team. Judge Jin, Gnor, Thompson, Aarons, Samuel. Samuel, please score. Someone score. We're all over them. Gnor with the shot. The low knee comes on off the bench. To make a debut and make a splash down south as he grabs a goal for Lewis. Ball falls to him at the edge of the area, doing what I was talking about the Roman playmaker role doing in terms of looking for those loose balls from crosses coming in. It's as if the game knew what I wanted to talk about this episode and wants to make me look like a genius when I describe roles and what they can do for us. But that is exactly what the Roman playmaker is there to do. A deep line playmaker would have been sat deeper, as his name suggests. Can we get another? Can we make this comfortable? Jerome, go on. Ball in. Samuel. Oh, that was a chance. That was another chance for us. Looking at this game, there's been 10 clear-cut chances between either side, and none of them have taken any of them. Samuel, you've just missed another. Make it 12. Make it 12 clear-cut chances. <laughs> Can we make something happen here? We are all over them. Aaron, Samuel, Stewart. Ball's there. Sweeney makes it 3-1. We're on our road to our first three points of the year. Hopefully we can hold on now for the remainder of this game. We've looked very, very impressive actually in terms of creating chances. We've not taken many of them today, but on another day this could have been a lot more comfortable for us. And with us a few issues maybe to sort out at the back, but we've got some money to invest into that if the right players come along. Might have to be somewhere I look to invest having kind of seen the performance today by our right back. But today is a very good day as we do record our first three points in the division in a very impressive performance you'd have to say the, the system the 4-4-2 coming back that we used a few years ago we've really got the players to work it and use the system still and you saw there it worked like absolute clockwork but anyway that is going to wrap things up for today's episode guys uh, if we look at the fixtures and stuff oh, we have some staff coming in excellent um, but if we look at the the fixtures coming up, we've got a few big games. I think the next game I might do might be the Derby game because it's such a big transfer. Uh, sorry, it's such a big game, and it's just after the transfer window closes, so it could be a good one. Uh, so hopefully you guys will stick around for that. What a way to start our League One campaign! An impressive performance, three goals on the board, and hopefully we can have more of the same in the coming weeks. So hopefully I'll see you guys that next episode. Let me know what you're making my transfers down in the comments. I do read them. I do like to hear kind of the fans consensus have a little bit of a debate let me know who you think are good signings bad signings average signings and yeah hopefully i'll see you guys on the next one it is me jack and i'm out